we're focusing on building for this project a neurovascular unit on a chip, which is a fancy way of saying it's a very dumb brain on a chip. The unit that we're trying to put together is a blood vessel with the supporting cells and the neurons to show when you deliver a drug, does it get to the brain or does it not? Does it get to the brain in the form that you want? One aspect of our project is to do the analytical chemistry in the, the milli and micro volumes that correspond to milli humans and micro humans rather than the classic chemistry that's done in a doctor's lab. So you feed the cells a toxin or a drug and they immediately scream and they either get very active or they go to sleep and you look at how much glucose they're consuming or lactate they're producing and you can say, ah, this drug or toxin had an effect on the cell. You can have a microclinical analyzer for each milliorgan. You can really understand very carefully, very clearly, what the drug or the toxin is doing to the milliorgan or the microorgan. One of the reasons why drugs fail in the course of a very expensive development of a new drug is that they don't have a test that simulates what the drug will do in a human. So the idea is to create a human on a chip. You get cells that are directly derived from humans and you grow them up to create organs. Then these organs will ideally have a much more representative response to the drug than a rabbit might. A drug might be metabolized by one organ in a way that becomes toxic for another. So there, there are classic cases where drugs are metabolized by the liver and they damage the heart. Or a drug can be metabolized in the blood-brain barrier and you think it is preventing epilepsy, but in fact it could be aggravating it because the product that gets into the brain has the wrong response. So the trick on the organs on a chip program is to not only build organs that are better models of a human, but let the organs talk to each other. You don't want to make a full human on a chip because it's too hard and expensive, so you want to make a millihuman, a thousandth of a human. That now says that instead of four and a half liters of blood, you have four and a half milliliters of blood. Four thimbles full of, of blood would be in your millihuman on a chip. If you go to a microhuman, you're down to the point where the amount of fluid in the microhuman be several drops of fluid. Not only does the organ have to be small, but the tubing connecting the organ to another organ or to a pump or a valve also has to be small. So much of our work is focused on building the support plumbing, the pumps and the valves that are matched to a millihuman or a microhuman. It's actually a great deal of fun, it's a challenge. Clearly, it's going to contribute to the discovery of new drugs, the development of the drugs to be clinically useful, and determination of the toxicity and safety of drugs. It's clear that organs on a chip will help streamline the pharmaceutical pipeline, and people should benefit from that without having to have drugs be pulled from the market because of unanticipated side effects. People will benefit directly from a clearer understanding of toxicology, particularly environmental toxins. I personally think environmental toxins are a very serious problem, and it'd be nice to have an assay that lets you identify whether any of the tens of thousands of chemicals in our life are toxic. Organs on a chip will be a very useful engine to drive us along a better understanding of both ourselves and how to take care of ourselves, both from the point of view of, of drugs to solve problems with illnesses and environmental toxins that might kill us.